Well, Junior, I guess uh, first, you, your thoughts on, on Oregon State's defense, and I know uh, you got the defending Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week, big corner. What, what, what do you kind of look at when you look at their defense? Um, they're good. They're aggressive. Um, they're going to get in your face. They're going to play man. Um, that corner is a, a really good player, big, long-rangey corner, physical. Um, we're going to have our hands full. He's going to challenge us. A guy, a guy that big, I mean, you don't see very many of them. What's kind of the ch challenge may seem obvious, but, you know, a guy that can kind of keep up with even smaller receivers seems pretty well, impressive. Of course, they, you, know, you know, his strength being big and strong, physical guy, he, you know, he moves well. You know what I mean? He's got good feet. He's got good hips. He's, in, he's good in transition. Um, and, he can, and he makes plays on the ball like a wideout. How, how, is, how, how do you feel your crew's done you know, through two games so far? Um, through two games, they've been, they've been solid. Um, I thought Seth's played good football for us. Um, Thomas has played good football for us. Um, obviously, I mean, shoot, we only had two games. We're not nowhere near where we want to be or where we need to be. Um, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, you know, just, I'm always going to say it, consistency. We just want to be consistent from snap one to the end of the game. When you look at Oregon State, what have they given most teams trouble with or the most trouble with, and what has given them the most trouble? Um, you know, the, the pressures. They brought some good pressures, and they get up in front, they get in your face. They're going to play man to man. They're going to play man to man and press and, and, and challenge you at the line of scrimmage. And, and like I said, I mean, I think they're top 10 in the country in turnover margin right now through, what, through two weeks. I mean, that's, that's pretty good now. And uh, so we got, we got to do a good job of ball security and, and taking care of the football. Who was your time like? At Oregon State, and, and, and you were there during a, a pretty good time for the no, Beavers. Oregon State, I went there right out of high school. I was there for three years. Um, it was a great time. I, you know, I came in with Coach Riley. Um, I was part of one of his recruiting classes, and he left and and um, went to the San Diego Chargers. Um, and then here comes Dennis Erickson coming in, and uh, Dennis Erickson and his staff was awesome. <clears throat> My receiver coach, Eric Yarber, was, I mean, it's still like a, a really good friend of mine to this day. He's not a receiver coach at UCLA, but I mean, that was a special time. You always realize how special teams are, you know, after the fact, probably five or ten years after. And, uh, you know, that we had, you want to be beating Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. <clears throat> I think it was in um, 2001. Um, you know, I played, I got the opportunity to play with some good players on a receiving court with Chad Johnson and, uh, and TJ Husmanzada. And, uh, you know, I was able to learn a lot. I was young. I was able to learn a lot from those two guys. And, Robert Prescott, I mean, James Newsom, the list kind of goes on. And Jonathan Smith was a quarterback. Kenny Simonton was the running back. I mean, it was, that was a loaded team. And, you know, with Erickson and what his staff did, um, you know, they, they gave me a foundation. And, you know, I, I appreciate all they've done for me. With, uh, you, you, uh, I've been asked some of the coaches about, you know, you got the co OCs with Hill and Huff and, you know, the hardest call in place. How has that worked out so far for you guys? It's been good. You know, I think, you know, with the continuity, we got good guys, you know what I mean? And, 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 it's, and it's, it's low ego in there. And we, we're, all in it for, we're all in it for one thing, and that's to win a Mountain West championship. And, and we all understand that. We're all on the same page. Um, we get in that room up, upstairs, and, and uh, we detail things up. And it, it's, it's always good dialogue. We're always learning from each other. I mean, Scott Huff is a brilliant mind. Zach Hill, the addition of Zach Hill has been awesome. Um, and, you know, Coach Harson and his success as offense coordinator here is, is uh, it's just awesome. I'm, I'm just fortunate to be in a room with those guys and be able to learn as much as I have learned. Where do you want to see your receivers make strides this week? You've got a bye week, work on some things. What do you want to see better this week? Um, I want to consistently beat man-to-man -man coverage, and I want to consistently make plays on the ball and, you know, and, and um, run after the catch. I want to score touchdowns. <laughs> are, are, are you where you want to be with it with the, the, that second wave? Because I mean, I know we talked about trying to develop mm -hmm. those guys, and I think they only have one. You know, other than your three starters, only have one catch this year. I mean, I know it's two games in, but mm -hmm. where are you kind of on that next wave right now? Um, they're they're practicing hard every day, you know, and, and they're making plays. You, you see them. I don't, I don't know how much long you guys are out there at practice, but those guys are they're working hard and and they're making plays, and their opportunities are going to come. And that's the good thing about it. It's, we're only two weeks into the season, going on week three. So, um, like I said before, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And they keep working at it. They come in, they come in after practice. They're probably up there here in the next 20, 30 minutes. They'll be up there watching film. Um, they'll be here tomorrow, and, and they'll go back to work just like we all do. The, uh, the sample size on said, I mean, it, it's pretty small at this level, but it's been pretty impressive so far. I mean, uh, he says that you know, just getting out there in, 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 at the FBS level, he's gained some confidence. What, what have you seen out of him? 
uh, in terms of gaining confidence and, and getting used to the speed of this game? Well, you know, it's with success comes confidence, and, and you know, to credit said, he works at it. You know, and so when he does get in the game, it's it's not an off factor. He practices fast. He makes plays like he's going to make them in the game. And then on Saturdays, he's been consistently making plays on third down. You know, obviously, he, you know, he goes up and makes plays with his height. But you mm -hmm. know, the the third down catch at Lafayette, that was a big play. The third down catch um, last two weeks ago against Washington State on our sideline. I mean, that was a big play to keep a drive going mm -hmm. late in the game. So he practices that way and. Uh, you know, and he's going to keep continuing to get better. It seems like, you know, I know you get, sometimes those balls are referred to as 50-50 balls, but it doesn't seem like they're 50-50 balls when they're, when, they're, when they're kind of going in his direction at this moment. Yeah, I usually don't call them 50-50. I usually call them moment of truth plays. <laughs> All right, are we going to go get it or are we not going to go get it? And, uh, and he, that's, he strives in that situation. You know, it's, it's a mindset. And um, when the ball is in the air, and, and, you know, from Coach Harson on down, um, when the ball's in the air, it's ours. We always talk about being a frisbee catching dog, and and that's what our, that's what we want our mindset to be. Obviously, their DC was at uh, Utah State last year, and, and you guys struggled in, in that game offensively. How much do you kind of look back at the, that film or his schemes, kind of, and see what, what he had working that day when you kind of prepare for Saturday? Yeah, we, I mean that's, and you know, whoever we play, and then there's a new coordinator. We're always going to go back and watch, um, you know, what they did against us or. Um, against anybody else. He's, I mean, last year that game, he, he did a heck of a job against us. A heck of a job against us. They, they caused turnovers. I mean, it was a nightmare for us. And credit them. I mean, they played good football. They played faster than us. And they, I'm, to be honest with you, they wanted it more than us. You, you see a lot of, obviously, new players. But I mean, do you see a lot of similarities in terms of what they're doing these first two games uh, from what you've yeah. seen from Utah State? Yeah, there is. There is. There is a lot. There are some similarities to, to what he did at Utah State with, you know, what, uh, what he's doing at Oregon State. It, it's personnel is different, yeah, but um, there, there's some similarities. What's enabled Thomas to, you know, the defenses are keying on him more and more, and he's still able to get open time and time again. What, what do you think just enables him to do that with, you know, teams focusing on him now? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we just go out there and play football, and we, you know, the, the concept is drawn up, and um, they give us a certain coverage, and, and he's open, we're going we're gonna to give him the ball. I mean, that goes for anybody. Um, and Thomas will tell yourself he, you know, he 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 likes other guys making plays as well. Does that require just like an extra step of effort when he knows that you know defenses are gonna gonna key on him? So yeah. he has to, it's work more to get open. Well, we're all competitors, and Thomas is an ultra competitor. And I know he may come off quiet sometimes, but the dude is an ultra competitor, and and uh, he he's gonna work at it, and he's gonna he loves the challenge. But with with Brett. I